I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I feel like I mean, it. I. There's the Gracie guard, which is a jiu-jitsu move. <laughs> What's there's that? Rubber like? guard. Gracie guard is a pretty basic guard. You know, like Ten Planet jiu-jitsu guard, like Eddie Bravo's guard. That's a rubber guard. That's with one foot over and hook. Okay, good. There's those guards. Let's talk about Haven's guard. <laughs> the, I mean, Let's it's interesting. That's really, I think that's really like a, a Lucas Bryant, Nathan Warnos topic. Like, I mean, I think you have some interaction with them, but I feel like Audrey is dealing with throughout the season with her own monsters that even though she's aware of the guard and dealt with them a lot last season, it's kind of something else. Like, she's more focused on the Colorado kid and the hunter. The, the, the writers wanted to introduce what could potentially be almost like the troubled mafia. And that's what the guard is. Um, Ooh, and, I like uh, that. You didn't hear that one? I no. didn't come up with that. <laughs> I haven't heard that. Okay, I did come up with it, but I'm giving, trying to give the writers credit. That's brilliant. No, um, but, you know, the idea was to be able to introduce an entity into the show that could, on one hand, be altruistically good and, at the same time, very, very corruptible. So as we move forward in, in the next, you know, hopefully several seasons, we have something, you know, that, that is a combatant to us. You know, as we, as we see this team and this family grow we needed someone to do battle with we had a great you know um, entity at one point in the Rev you know in the Reverend Driscoll and it was time to introduce the, the next version of that and, and it's it's one of the most fascinating things about the show I think is that although we think the troubled are evil or bad the truth is most of the troubled are not they are Outcasts. They are minorities. They are, you know, all those symbolisms that is really what it's about. So the guard was sort of the same thing. Although they appear to be the authority and appear to be righteous, they may be in some regards, but they also may not be. And I think we find out a lot this season, um, a little bit more of the inner workings of the guard and that it may be a bigger thing than we think. So I think that Audrey finds that fascinating. Um, and that's all I can say about Jesse that. Ventura has a lot of thoughts about the guard. <laughs> he's he's convinced it's a conspiracy. Um, I hope Jesse Ventura doesn't see this. <laughs> how does Duke feel about, or how do you feel about uh, Duke's sort of gift slash curse uh, of the power that he has to yeah. people's troubles? Let me ask Duke. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, <clears throat> um, it's it's uh, it's been a really fun uh, storyline for me. And um, hello, hi, Anita. Hello. How are you? <laughs> Glad you could finally make it. <laughs> it's, nice to be here as well. it's fine. We were waiting for like <laughs> half hour for you. Well, you know, I have really just been pretty, shooting the breeze. You know, Anita, so would you like yeah. a chair? All right, I will move the chair over. <laughs> I was just going to kneel. No, here, hang on. I'm gonna, <laughs> Okay. Oh, 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 all right, so, uh, anyways, um, I think it's the. I gotta say, I don't know that I. To be frank, I don't know that I saw how good the writers were at creating th- this world in its conflicts and its um, uh, dichotomies. I, I know I was like, okay, there's. Audrey, and then she likes this cop, Nathan, and then there's kind of this, you know, criminal guy, Duke, and she kind of likes him, and there's kind of a thing. And I'm realizing how much more sophisticated it is and how much deeper it goes, and I think part of that, you know, I I would like to think has to do with us as actors, but I think they've written these really special things that are, as as life are, we're always faced with contradictions, and and I think Duke is, is given this... You know, power, curse, gift. I mean, it's sort of, you summed it up right there. It, it, it's all these things. So it's, as an actor, it's really fun to play off of all of these things. The show has a, a lot of mysteries, uh, largely something with you, of course, but with everybody, and, and they unfold at their own pace. Do you guys as actors, do you know where everything is going, or do you sometimes have to go to the writers and say, what's going on? I need to know. Yeah, we know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I knew this was going to <laughs> We know nothing, ever. We try to find things out, but 
I mean, that's kind of one of the uh, beautiful mysteries, if you will, of television. It's sort of this, you know, unfolding Pandora's box. Not just our show, every show, because writers may have a plan and end game, all this stuff, but how, how they sort of get there, like life, you know, is, uh, is changeable and is a variable by the network and by how the audience responds and all, all of these things. So, I mean, we'd really like to know some information, and sometimes we ask, and sometimes they come and they say, hey, do you want to know this? And we're like, uh-uh, don't tell me. Um, but, but no, we don't, we don't know. Oh, and, and so polite of you. That, um, <laughs> that I'm, I'm, I'm good, I'm a diplomat. And, uh, but that actually has been kind of a good thing for the character of Audrey, because she doesn't know, a, she doesn't have a clue about anything. And anything she does know ends up getting ripped out from underneath her at any given time. So it ends up kind of working out because I get just as pissed off as she does. I feel like I live in this tiny town and everybody else knows what's going on and I'm never told anything. And I'm asking everybody, here's the main part, and nobody will say yeah. anything. It's, it's a really fun game And they just look at each now. other a lot. Because they, they actually tell me everything. Exactly. See? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. That's not true at all. I know. There, there, are, there are two very distinct schools of thought in Havenland. There are those in the camp of the actors shouldn't know anything. We should yes. surprise them every day. And then there are... Well, I think pretty much just the actors on the other camp. That only the actors would be in the other camp. In the other camp. No, and Sean, Sean Pillar, our, one of our executives, Sean Sometimes. Pillar. He, he does other. We think that we should know everything because it's our job as actors to create... The layers. The, the layers and the suspense and know that if we're starting here and going there that we can weave ideas in and out and reveal a little bit or to hold a little bit back. But that, that war has not been uh, won or settled yet. That don't always happen. That's not so, how we do it around here, yeah. okay? You know what I'm saying? So we try our best, but... Where did, where did that accent come from? I don't know. We were doing Russian earlier. I know. Can we do the rest of the interview with the Russian accent? Okay. <laughs> Both those questions bring up a larger thing, which is mythology shows and shows of mythologies really seem to have taken off with modern audiences. Why, why do you think that is? I, I honestly think it's because of technology. I mean, to be truthfully honest, we don't really ever, we don't really live in a world now where you really have to tune in every single week, and, it, you know, you're very rarely... But you should. You should. You, no, you should. <laughs> Live. You totally should. Because we're still in if a ratings... Have a Nielsen because we're still in a ratings world where that matters. But, I mean, it, I think by the nature of how television has developed, like, it used to be really important to get those single viewers that would, like... I know, I'm like, it's like a World War III like out there. I know, great. that's a crazy, awesome. crazy yeah. setup. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy <laughs> setup. But um, it's not like you're flipping the channel and you're only going to stay on that one. Like, now you can get a season and you're like, oh, I want to watch that whole season. It's like reading the whole book instead of just being like, oh, I think I'm going to like this chapter or this chapter or this chapter. So I think the long-form storytelling, I mean, television is in its golden age in that sense, you know? So we all, we're we really excited that our show is getting to lean more towards the mythology, but I think people that want, you know, the little individual stories of the week, they get that too. This was brought up in panel, but the one thing that slightly disconcerted me was watching Audrey show terror or fear, because in the season premiere, we see her actually afraid by this man who's kidnapped her, and I thought, well, hasn't she been kidnapped before? And then in second season, then we actually see her almost crying, and she's afraid, and Duke goes up and gets a screwdriver and thinks he's the cop with the gun. Shouldn't she go to see who yeah. might be coming? So how do you feel about this new development in your character? I love it. It was one of the main things that was presented to me when I was there sitting trying to get answers from our writers, was what, so what's her arc this season? What's the, what's the where is she going? Mm -hmm. And I didn't really get anything, mm -hmm. except for that there would be an external threat and something that would really shake her up that she would feel was always around. And uh, how does she handle that threat? Instead of her just trying to figure out her, her mystery of herself, like, how does she react when there's something actually not just going after people that she can help, mm -hmm. but her specifically, mm -hmm. you know? And I think it's interesting. I mean, it happens in her apartment. It happens in a place that she's safe 
uh, right in the backyard of, you know, one of her best friends. And she is used to being protected in a sense, and all of that's stripped away now too. So I really, of course, as an actress, love that opportunity to show that side of her. 